students, welcome sa panibagong episode ng Learning with Miss Babylene. I am Miss Babylene, ang bago niyong kakwentuhan at magbibigay ng bagong kaalaman. Handa na ba kayong matuto? Simulan na natin! Before we start our discussion for the new topic, let us first review about the nutritional needs of an adolescent. Let us answer the following questions. You can write your answer on a piece of paper or comment your answers below this video. For today's episode, we will talk about malnutrition, micronutrient deficiency, and eating disorder. Ayon sa UNICEF, 95 kada araw ang batang namamatay dahil sa malnutrition. 27 sa 1,000 ang hindi na umaabot sa kanilang 5th birthday dahil dito. A third of Filipino children are stunted or short for their age. Pero ano nga ba ang malnutrition? Hungry children are not healthy children. Without access to adequate meals, a child will suffer from stunting and chronic malnutrition, which has adverse effects. Around the world, at least 3.1 million children die from malnutrition per year. In 2011, poor nutrition was the cause of 45% of deaths among children under 5 years old. In the Philippines, 3 out of 10 children aged 5 to 10 suffer from chronic malnutrition. The rate of stunting due to malnutrition is now at its worst in a decade. The effects of malnutrition are irreversible. It makes a young child more vulnerable to diseases such as pneumonia and diarrhea. It can affect a child's academic performance, which in turn hinders them to have a better life. The issue of malnutrition and hunger can still be solved within our lifetime. Wouldn't you want to help? Private and public institutions are raising awareness and efforts to battle this global issue. You too can be part of the solution. Malnutrition is a condition wherein a person is not getting enough of the right food. We have two kinds of malnutrition. We have the undernutrition and the overnutrition. When we say undernutrition, it is a condition wherein a person does not eat or take the daily needed nutrients and nutritional requirements leading to diseases and deficiencies. Ang ibig sabihin, hindi niya nakakain or hindi niya nakukuha yung enough nutrients para sa isang araw. Overnutrition happens when a person eats and gets nutritional requirements beyond the needed and ideal amount. So, ibig sabihin naman, pag overnutrition, ito naman yung sobra-sobra. Sobra-sobra yung nutrients na nakukuha mo para sa iyong katawan. And, ang overnutrition, ito ay nagli-lead to obesity. Obesity is a condition in which a person has too much body fat. Malnutrition should be attended to immediately. If this will not be checked early among adolescents, it will lead to serious problems. Some of these problems are slow growth and development, poor school performance, sluggishness o yung pagiging tamad and fatigue, and poor nutrition until adult. We also have what we call as micronutrient deficiency o ito yung lagi nating naririnig sa mga patalastas ng gatas, ng iba't ibang pagkain. Pero ano nga ba yun? Micronutrient deficiency are diseases caused by deficiency of vitamins or minerals in the diet. So, ibig sabihin, ito yung kulang ka sa mga nutrients or minerals or vitamins sa kinakailangan ng iyong katawan. Ano-ano nga ba yun? We have what we call as the VAD or the vitamin A deficiency. This primarily affects children but the effects last a lifetime. Pwede siyang mag ng night blindness or worst, pwede yung maging permanent blindness na. The child suffering from VAD does not reach optimum physical growth and becomes prone to infections that contribute to high rates of sickness and death among young children. We 
we can prevent VAD by regular consumption of vitamin A rich food like for example carrots, uh, kalabasa, different kinds of vegetables and fruits. So makakatulong 'yun para ma-prevent natin ang VAD. Next is the iron deficiency anemia. It is a condition in which the red blood cell count or the hemoglobin is less than normal. So ito ay kadalasan nakakaapekto sa mga adolescent girls, sa mga buntis, at pati na rin sa mga preschool children. Anemia results in retarded physical growth, low resistance to infections, and slow development of learning abilities. In adults, it causes fatigue and reduced work capacity and it also may cause reproductive impairment. To prevent this, we have to eat regularly iron-fortified food products, for example, chicken, liver, broccoli, pork, beef, potatoes, and many more. Next is the Iodine Deficiency Disorder or the IDD. It results from lack of iodine in the diet. Iodine is needed to produce thyroid hormones. It is the most prevalent causes of development delay and brain damage in regions where little iodine occurs naturally in diet. Of course, to prevent this, we have to regularly eat iodine-rich foods. We also have the eating disorders. Eating disorder is an extreme, unsafe eating behavior that can cause serious illnesses or it may lead to death. We have the anorexia nervosa. It is an eating disorder characterized by self-imposed starvation leading to excessive weight loss. It is an extreme fear of becoming obese and distorted view one's body size and shape. Ang mga may anorexia nervosa ay nakikita nila ang sarili nila sa salamin na sobrang taba kahit na sila ay sobrang payat na. Next is bulimia. It is a disorder in which the clearing of the digestive tract follows a cycle of overeating. People with this disorder will eat a large quantity of food. Ibig sabihin sila ay kakain ng kakain ng marami. Pero afterwards, may gagawin sila para maalis yung pagkain na kinain nila. They may induce vomiting or sinusukan nila yung mga kinakain nila agad-agad or umiinom sila ng maraming laxatives or they abuse laxative or pwede din silang uh, mag-exercise ng sobra-sobra. Next is the binge eating disorder. It is characterized by compulsive eating. People who indulge in compulsive eating consume a large amount of food in one time only but they do not eliminate it. Sabi nga sa isang quotation, Health is not about the weight you lose, but about the life you gain. Kaya naman, kailangan nating ingatan ng ating mga sarili sa paraan na pagkain ng tama at masusustansya. Ito ang makakatulong sa atin para tayo ay maging ligtas sa iba't ibang sakit katulad ng nangyayari ngayon. Tandaan din natin na ang sobra-sobra ay nakakasama. Kailangan kumain lang tayo ng tama sakto at sapat para sa ating pangangatawan. To know if you have learned something, let us answer some questions about the topic. You can write your answer in a piece of paper or comment your answers on the comment box below this video. May natutunan ka ba sa video natin today? Kung nagustuhan mo ang video na ito, huwag kalimutan i-like, mag-subscribe, at hit ang notification bell upang updated ka sa susunod nating mga videos. Happy learning! Bye!